Welcome to From the Pilot Seat. Join me as we explore real aviation stories, lessons learned, and incredible flying machines. If you love flying or want to learn, hit subscribe and come along for the ride. For deeper insights, check out my books, Lessons from the Sky and from the Pilot Seat. They could make all the difference on your next flight. All right, this is it. We're here on the hard stand at Brisbane International Airport and we're about to perform our first hydrogen powered spin. Tell us, you've got a bonanza behind you. How did you get to where you are with the aircraft and the, the tech, I guess? Yeah, so this is Bonnie. She's gonna fly eminently. We're working really hard. This will be Australia's first hydrogen electric aircraft to fly. So super exciting piece of Oceania aerospace history, if you will, right? It's, it's gonna be a, a cool moment. Um, so how did we get here? Yeah, so, so kind of, we raised that bit of capital. We started to think about like, okay, what is it that we wanna make? Do we wanna make airplanes? Do we wanna make propulsion systems? Do we wanna make just pieces of the propulsion system? So our propulsion system, it's hydrogen electric propulsion, which is a tank of hydrogen, a fuel cell that converts hydrogen to electricity and a motor that uses that electricity to spin a prop. So there's like three key pieces. In. And we looked around and we were like, motors are pretty sorted. MagniX has done them. There's a bunch of companies working on it. Um, we thought about doing our own, but we were like, nah, let's not bite off more than we have to. Um, then we looked at the liquid hydrogen tanks. We're working with Fabrum in New Zealand. Super excited to be working with them. They're, they're, they've got cutting edge tech. I think they say from the bottom of the world, right? So And so we were like, let's just not reinvent that either. So we bought motors, bought tanks. We started looking at fuel cells and they just don't work for airplanes. Like the fundamental thing is the ones that are out there in cars and trucks are just too heavy for airplanes. Not only are they too heavy, but they have too much drag. So in order to cool them, you need these massive radiators that are bigger than the frontal area of your airplane. And we were just like, that's not going to close. Some of our competitors have flown on that tech. And so that was when we were like, okay, we're going to do hydrogen electric propulsion. We're going to like buy a couple parts, but the fuel cell someone needs to fix this someone needs to invent something so we were working looking in that space and then we ended up coming across the breakthrough that's happened in high temperature fuel cells and we we started like scratching around do we design our own and we've ended up going in into that space so we're basically developing our own um, high temperature fuel cell for aircraft applications and that's the key that unlocks it you if you couple a high temperature fuel cell with a liquid hydrogen tank all of a sudden you have an electric propulsion system that can fly two times further than a fossil fuel powered aircraft if you when we get to the targets that we're heading for so that that was kind of as a business we were like okay we're going to do propulsion systems and we're going to own the fuel cell and then the question was like what airplane do we do like how big do we go do we go big small do we do drones do we do two seat trainers and there's something beautiful about this size aircraft so with this technology as you'll probably like a lot of technology the same like architecture and solution doesn't always make sense at small scale versus big scale. So if you make like a small drone propulsion system, you might cool it in a different way or you would you would design a different architecture. And so we picked the Bonanza because this sort of like, call it 250 kilowatts, 350 horsepower. It's like the, the smallest size that we can build a system that will scale to like one megawatt to what would go to a PT6 turboprop size aircraft, like a caravan, Beach 1900, um, and then it, it'll scale beyond that. So so we really picked it because it's like the right size. And then we also picked the Bonanza because it's like a cult classic, like people love it. It's a beautiful airplane. It's been built for a long time. Um, I think it's like longest running production of an aircraft. And, and so, and we also talked to some people who were like, they flew it and they just said, it's a beautiful airplane. Like the th you think, and it just goes that way. It's like a, that we were like that, that's, that's, let's pick that size and that type of airplane. Um, and another cool thing that's happened along the way is um, Bonanzas are designed for wingtip tanks. And so we're, we're actually just taking off the Avgas wingtip tanks and putting liquid hydrogen tanks on. And the aircraft's already designed for the weight out of the wingtip. So it's just like simplifies the modification. Um, yeah. And, and we're, we're super happy with it. So. Yeah, that's why why Bonanza. It's awesome. And so tell us, so we, we get the Bonanza flying. What's next? What what's the what's the growth phase? Yeah. Um so we gotta get this thing flying and that's really a proof point for the tech. 
Um, but what I really am, am focused on is shipping product to customers, like the first step. So I'll, I can talk a bit about the longer term vision in a second, but really like you get the technology flying, that's cool, but it's really different when your product is in a customer's hands and they're operating it. So we're talking about shipping systems at the end of next year. So late 2026 is when we'd start shipping product to customers. Um, and that's when I think it really becomes real. If you think about the electric car, right? A bunch of people were developing electric cars in their garages for years, but Tesla made the Roadster and they sold not a lot of them, but there was enough. They started ending up in the real world. Like people would pull up at a restaurant in an electric car and people would be like, what's that? And like, what I imagine is we have products in customers' hands and they fly at their local airport or we go to Oshkosh and fly. And it just changes from, you know, people talking to like, no, no, come in. Like you can knock on the fuselage. This stuff's real. I'll pop the hood and I'll show you the tech. Um, in fact, get in the airplane. Let's go for a flight. And then it's just so different. Like that, that's where I'm, I get super excited because that's where the magic happens. And that's not a certified plane making us lots of money, but it's a, it's a really big moment. So aim of, of that is like late next year, early the following is when the tech gets out in the world. Um, and then the idea is like from say 30 beyond, we would start scaling up to larger aircraft. So this system in the Bonanza, it can go in a, it, we could put it in a Cirrus SR-22, we could put it in a Cessna 206, anything with a Continental IO 550 size engine, you know, you could, you could swap out. Um, you can put it in an EV toll aircraft. So think like those people that are doing flying cars. Um, you can also put it in other fixed wing electric aircraft. So there's a bunch of different places we can put the system um, before we scale it up. Um, but then like think 2030 to 2035, we would start looking at like 10 to 20 seat airplanes. Um, and then our kind of long-term vision for Stralis is if you think about what Tesla did, right? Initially they developed propulsion systems for cars and they sold them to Daimler and Mercedes uh, to Toyota. So they started in propulsion and now they make full cars. In the future, we we may very well do the same thing. That's kind of my vision is we're called Stralis Aircraft. So I think late 2030s, um, we have a, a design for like a 50 seat, like a Dash 8 or ATR size aircraft um, that we think would really disrupt that part of the market. And so, you know, if, if we're like the best company in the world making hydrogen propulsion systems, that establishes a strong business. And from that vantage point, we can then leverage up and, you know, go for building clean sheet aircraft from there, which people in aerospace think we're crazy. They're like, you can't do that. People thought Tesla was crazy. I think you need bold visions to like inspire your team and get people excited. And the government loves it. Like down here, they're like, that would be cool if Australia made airplanes again, you know? And, and so I think there's other forms of funding that we can access if we, if we head down that road. So. Awesome. If you could sum everything up that you've done around this, what what would you say? I've got a great team behind me and not, not just like my team, but like all of our partners, the people that supply to us. Um, I think that's actually the thing that I'm most proud of is like we built an incredible team and we're not even there yet. We have so much big stuff ahead of us. We're inspiring kids. I grew up reading the Lockheed Martin Skunk Works and the heyday of the jet revolution. And we're in one of those moments, like aviation is going to change, whether people like it or not, you know, things are, are happening and, and it's just super cool to like build a team and be a part of that, like transition. That, that's probably the bit that gets me most excited and that I'm most proud of. If you love flying or want to learn, hit subscribe and come along for the ride. For deeper insights, check out my books, Lessons from the Sky and from the Pilot Seat. They could make all the difference on your next flight.